This is the story of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Perhaps the most remarkable, certainly the most successful book ever to come out of the great publishing corporations of Ursa Minor. More popular than the Celestial Home Care Omnibus, better selling than 53 More Things to Do in Zero Gravity, and more controversial than Ulan Kalufid's trilogy of philosophical blockbusters, Where God Went Wrong, Some More of God's Greatest Mistakes, and Who Is This God Person Anyway? And in many of the more relaxed civilizations on the outer eastern rim of the galaxy, the Hitchhiker's Guide has already supplanted the great Encyclopedia Galactica as the standard repository of all knowledge and wisdom. For though it has many omissions, contains much that is apocryphal, or at least wildly inaccurate, it scores over the older, more pedestrian work in two important respects. First, it is slightly cheaper, and secondly, it has the words, Don't Panic, inscribed in large, friendly letters on the cover. To tell the story of the book, it is best to tell the story of some of those whose lives it affected. A human from the planet Earth was one of them. Though as our story opens, he no more knows his destiny than a tea leaf knows the history of the East India Company. His name is Arthur Dent. He is a six foot tall ape descendant and someone is trying to drive a bypass through his home. off it, Mr. Dent. You can't win, you know. You can't lie in front of the bulldozers indefinitely. I'm game. We'll see who rusts first. You're going to have to accept it, you know. This bypass has got to be built, and it's going to be built. Nothing you can why say... Why has it got to be built? What do you mean, why has it got to be built? It's a bypass. You've got to build bypasses. You were quite entitled to make any suggestion or protest at the appropriate time. Appropriate time? The first I heard about it was when a workman arrived at the door yesterday. I thought he'd come to clean the windows. He told me he'd come to demolish the house. He didn't sell me straight away, of course. No, first he wiped a couple of windows and charged me a fiver. Then he told me. But, Mr. Den, the plans have been available in the planning office for the last nine months. Oh, yes. Well, of course, as soon as I heard, I went straight round to see them. You hadn't exactly gone out of your way to call much attention to them, had you? Like telling anybody or anything. But the plans were on display. On display? I eventually had to go down to the cellar. That's the display department. With a torch. The lights are probably gone. So had the stairs. But you did see the notice, didn't you? Oh, yes. It was on display in the bottom of a locked filing cabinet stuck in a disused lavatory with a sign outside the door saying, Beware of the leopard. Ever thought of going into advertising? You don't get me like that, either. Mr. Dent. Hello, yes? Have you any idea how much damage this bulldozer would suffer if I were to let it roll straight over you? How much? None at all. By a strange coincidence, none at all is exactly how much suspicion the ape descendant Arthur Dent had that one of his closest friends was not descended from an ape, but was in fact from a small planet somewhere in the vicinity of Betelgeuse. Arthur Dent's failure to suspect this reflects the care with which his friend blended himself into human society after a fairly shaky start. When he first arrived 15 years ago, the minimal research he had done suggested to him that the name Ford Prefect would be nicely inconspicuous. 
he will enter our story in 30 seconds and say, Hello, Arthur. The ape descendant will greet him in return, but in deference to a million years of human evolution, he will not attempt to pick fleas off him. Both men are not proud of their ancestors and never invite them round to dinner. Hello, Arthur. Ford. Hi, how are you? Fine. Look, uh, are you busy? Busy? Well, I've just got this bulldozer to lie in front of, or it'll knock my house down. But otherwise, no, not especially. Why? Good. Anywhere we can talk? What? We've got to talk. Fine, talk. And drink. It's vitally important that we talk and drink now. We'll go to the pub in the village. Ford, you don't understand. That man wants to knock my house down. Well, he can do that whilst you're away, can't he? But I don't want him to. Ah. Ford, what's the matter? Nothing. Nothing's the matter. Listen to me. I've got to tell you the most important thing you've ever heard. I've got to tell you now, and I've got to tell you in the saloon bar of the Red Lion. Why? Because you're going to need a very stiff drink. No, no. What about my house? He wants to knock your house down. Yes. And he can't because you're lying in the way of his bulldozer. Exactly. I think we can come to some arrangement. Excuse me. Hello? Yes? Has Mr. Dent come to his senses yet? Can we for the moment assume that he hasn't? Well? Can we also assume that he's going to be staying there all day? So? So. All your men are going to be standing around here all day doing nothing. Could be, could be. Well, if you resign to doing that anyway, you don't actually need him to lie there all the time, do you? Not as such, no. Not exactly need. Well, if you just like to take it as read that he's actually there, then he and I could slip off down the pub for half an hour. How does that sound? Well, sounds perfectly reasonable, I suppose. And if you'd like to pop off for a quick on yourself later on, we could always cover for you in return. Oh, thanks. Thank you very much. That's very kind. Yeah. So, if you'd just like to come here and lie down. What? It's very simple. My client, Mr. Dent, says he will stop lying here in the mud on the sole condition that you take over from him. What are you talking about? Oh, sorry. You want me to come and lie down there? Yes. In front of the bulldozer? Yes. Instead of Mr. Dent? Yes. In the mud. In, as you say, the mud. In return for which, you will take Mr. Dent with you down to the pub. Yes. Promise? Promise. Come on, Arthur, get up. Let the man lie down. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> No sneaky knocking Mr. Dent's house down while he's away. All right? The slightest thought hadn't even begun to speculate about the merest possibility of crossing my mind. <laughs> 